Hi, pianists. So this video is about uh, the minor 2-5-1 progression. Um, so la last term, we talked about the 2-5-1 the progression in major, and we really spent all term dealing with that. And remember, we started with um, just, uh, you know, two note voicings, and then three note, and then four note, all the way up to five note. Um, and we went through the voice leading and the different parts of the chord. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, remind us of some of that. Um, I have some pictures from the board in class that I've taken in years past that I'll use, and then some things I will write out um, for you all on staff paper here. We're going to try some different technology today. I'm hoping it works. Um, so just to review the voice leading of the major 2-5-1 progression, we're talking about the two chord. So that's if, if we were dealing with a C major scale. The two chord is the one built on scale degree two. Right, so that's our bass note. And the five chord is the one built on scale degree five. And the one chord is built, built on scale degree one. So right now we're talking about built on the scale degrees of the major scale. And uh, the voice leading for it, we've got um, three, three parts of a chord, first of all. We have our bass, and, and that's usually the root. So in a 2 5 1, it's uh, the 2 5 1. Then we have our core. That's our third and seventh of the chord. And between the bass and core, we can basically identify the chord qualities. Um, so all of the real harmonic information, the important uh, kind of functional information telling us, is this a, a, a tonic chord? Is it a dominant chord? We can tell all of that from our bass and core. So uh, here's a, a 2 5 1 in major, uh, just uh, with the bass and core. Right, and then everything left is color. Uh, so, you know, we, we deal with our certain common colors. Uh, and uh, so the voice leading we've learned is starting with um, root on the bass, and then we've got the core. And then, you know, the ninth and fifth are the common colors on the two chord. You know, and they voice lead where the fifth becomes the ninth, and the ninth becomes the thirteenth. And then to the one chord, the ninth becomes the thirteenth, and the thirteenth becomes the ninth. And we also have that motion, that similar interchange between the sevenths and thirds. So the seventh becomes the third, becomes the seventh, third becomes the seventh, becomes the third. So putting it all together, it sounds like this. Now that's all two five ones based off of the major scale, but not all songs are based off of the major scale. <laughs> Not all chord progressions are based off of that. Uh, we can also base our chord changes off of the minor scale. Now, there are different minor scales. There's, um, you know, the Dorian scale, there's the Aeolian scale, there's the Phrygian scale. Um, and, you know, and we, we have the, um, and th those are all modes of the major scale. And then we also have the harmonic minor and the melodic minor. Um, so between all those things, there's a lot of modal mixture that's possible uh, that allows us um, different different chord qualities uh, in on the on the chord progressions in minor. Um, so this term, we're really going to be focusing in on the 2-5-1 in minor.
and we'll be doing a lot of uh, keys, a lot of tunes that make good use of that progression. Um, so I'm just looking. So with a two five one in minor, um, we end up with instead of uh, so a regular two five one. Now I'm going to try some writing. A regular two five one in major would be D minor seven. This is in C major. G7, C major 7. Right. Um. But in C minor, we all of a sudden we have three flats for our natural minor. But then you also have, uh, for when we want it. <laughs> we also sometimes have that raised sixth and raised seventh. So um, typically when we're talking about a 2-5-1 in minor, we're talking about a D half diminished chord, which is also sometimes written as D minor 7 flat 5, right? So that's the same as D minor 7, but with an A flat. And then the way it's often written, then it, there will be a dominant 7-5 chord, but usually it has some sort of alteration in it. Right? We're not going to play the 9th and 13th right on it. It doesn't, when we do that, it, it really sounds like it wants to, it, it sounds like the major key. So it's usually some sort of altered dominant. Um, the way it's commonly written is flat 9, but that's actually just shorthand for don't play a natural 9 on this. Um, so it, it could also be uh, a sharp 9, and it will also often have like um, a, a sharp 5 is pretty common, or a flat 5. Um, so sometimes we'll write that as G7 altered, A-L-T is the chord symbol for it. And then if it resolves to a one chord, we write C minor. And usually um, we're going to be thinking of that as not being a minor 7 chord. We're going to be thinking of that as something separate. Um, sometimes a minor 7 chord can work as a 1 chord, um, you know, so here's D minor 7 flat 5, moving to G7 altered, and then here's me going to C minor 7, and that sounds nice, um, but we're gonna, and it, and it can do that, but for the purposes of our class, we're gonna treat those minor 1 chords as minor 6-9 chords. So no 7th, but having the 9th and the 6th, or 13th. 13th is another word for 6th. Um, so if, it, if I write, if you see C-7 or C lowercase m7, then that means minor 7. But we're, if you just see C dash in this class, we're going to treat that as, um, a six, as a minor 6-9 chord. Um, so you might, so one question that might come up is, and, and I'm kind of thinking about things that uh, I've been asked in years past, um, is like what... Uh, why do we just say G7 flat 9 if, if that's not really what people tend to play? And the reason, I, I think people used to play that a little bit more, it, it sounds just a little bit kind of hokey. This is G7 flat 9. It has a little bit of that, um, 
I don't know. There's something a little pokey about it, to my ear at least. Feels a little dated. So even though that that would be the easiest thing for me to teach you to play, but it wouldn't sound good. So I don't want. We're not going to be learning that. I I there's lots of ways to play these these voicings, but I want to teach you kind of the most common, most useful, most versatile, most, you know, the voicing that if you only were to learn one, this is the one to learn. So even though um, a dominant seven flat nine would be most common, or would be how it's often written and would probably be easiest to learn, we're actually going to... Um, learn uh, a sharp five sharp nine chord which is often written uh as like g7 alt a l t so going through the voice leading we still have um we still have the same components we have our our bass our core and our color so let's let's look at this. Here's we'll say D half diminished, which can also be written as D minor seven flat five. And then what's often written as G seven flat nine and then C minor. Um but we're going to treat that C minor as C minor 6, 9. And this G7, even though we will often see it written as G7 flat 9, we are going to treat it as G7 alt, G7 altered, which is also often written as G7 sharp 5 sharp 9. Okay, so let's go through. First, we've got our base. So that's going to be our roots. So D, moving to G, moving to C. Okay. Then we have our third, we have our core, which is going to be third, moving to seventh, moving to third. Notice we have the E flat because it's now a minor third. And then we have our seventh moving to third. And then here, instead of moving to a seventh, because the seventh on C minor would be B flat, but we're not playing the seventh we're going to go to the 6th. Okay, so that gives us A on the C minor. Okay, so this is our base. This here this is our core. And now color. Now on a, the major two fives, the common colors on the two chord were the fifth and the ninth. So let me tell you, the fifth on a minor seven flat five chord is flat, right? So for a two five in minor, that's going to be an A flat instead of A natural. Now for ninths, we can play the natural nine on a minor seven flat five chord. So for D minor seven flat five, that's an E natural. That's kind of, that feels a little out there. It sounds cool in some contexts, but in other contexts, it can feel a little weird. And I think the reason for that is that the E natural uh, is not in the key of C minor, right? C minor, the most distinctive feature of C minor is the E flat. It's that minor third. 
Um, all the other notes, you know, we can still call C minor, but but you need an E flat, or it's or it's not going to feel like C minor. So the E natural feels a little out there uh, in terms of the key. So in this particular case, that sometimes sounds good, but most commonly, probably what, what's most frequently going to work is just doubling the root. Okay, so that gives us this sound. And by the way, I am just writing these notes, you know, for C minor, this voice leading, but um, this works, the same voice leading concepts works in all the keys, and, and you can move the notes around um, so that, uh, you know, you can have them closer together, you can have them spread further apart, you can have different ones on top and different ones on bottom. The, you know, so even though I'm writing it uh, with this kind of spread, I could take that third up an octave and have that in the middle of my right hand. Um, and that, that would work. I could also, you know, I, I can move all of that stuff. I can invert it. Which notes, depending, which notes on top and which notes on bottom of our inner voices. Um, okay, so moving forward. So if we were just doing a G7 flat 9, then these notes could just kind of stay where they are. And we'd have, we'd have uh, G as our root, F as our 7, B natural as our 3rd, then D as our 5th, and A flat is our flat nine. But we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that because it sounds a little hokey. Um, and in some settings that can feel good, but um, you know, I want to give you something that's most useful. So even though it's often written G7 flat nine, we're not going to play that we are going to play G7, sharp nine, sharp five. So the sharp nine is A sharp or B flat is how we're gonna think about it. Now it's a little weird, we have a B flat up in here and we have a B natural up in here. A lot of times uh, this might get written, this, this B natural could get written as a C flat, um, or uh, there's different ways. But anyway, you just got to be aware of that. You, there's both a B natural and a B flat happening at the same time. Um, it, and, and I guess you could call this an A sharp, but it just seems weird um, to do that. Same with the D sharp. We're not going to call it a D sharp, which is the sharp five. We're going to call it an E flat, which is the flat 13. Um, and here's what that sounds like. So we've got G in the bass, F as our seventh, B as our third. Then we have our flat 13, that's E flat, and our sharp nine, that's B flat. And that's a really... Uh, useful voicing, and later when we go to tritone substitution, that same voicing will will work pretty well. Um, so you might know if you think about um, the notes that are on a let's say a D flat D flat seven chord. So uh, a D or a D flat dominant thirteen chord is what I'm really saying. Right, which we learned last term, right? And so that's got the, it's a dominant seven chord built on D flat, and it has um, the 13th and the 9th on it. I'm sorry, the, the 9th and the 13th. Um, 
all of those notes are the same as what we were just playing except for the bottom note. So if I take, so in other words, if instead of a G here, I play a D flat, right? If instead of this, I play that, that's a D flat 13 chord. And that's called a tritone substitution. Um, but we're not doing that right now. We're not dealing with it. But it's part of why uh, I'm showing you this sharp nine, sharp five voicing for these dominant chords. It's because it's the same voicing you've already learned. Um, and uh, it, it's so versatile. Okay, so then finally we're at the last uh, the last chord, our one chord in minor. Um, so we we've we're gonna have uh, we are we have the flat thirteenth as our E flat, and that's gonna become the ninth. That's D. And then what was the sharp nine is gonna become the five. Right? And by the way, uh, just to, for completeness, we said that that's... These are our color notes. So here's the whole progression put together. Sounds pretty good. Okay. Um, so that's the my explanation of the minor two five one progression. Because so far I've just shown us in in the key of C minor. Let me just show us general. All right. So this is how we're going to play our minor two five ones. We're going to have the root becomes the root becomes the root. Third becomes seventh becomes third. 7th becomes 3rd, becomes 7th. And again, we can move these voices around. They don't have to be in this order. This is just um, kind of a convenient way to look at them. So that's our core. Here's our bass. I'll, I'll call it with an E, like it's a, like the bass of a... Uh, like a, the bass of a of a table or something, okay? So the base. And then our color, which is flat five to sharp nine. Two, uh, five. Also, the root becoming uh, the flat 13, becoming the 9. Let's see if I got that right. I think that's correct. Um, Oh, I need a little bracket. Okay, so this is how we're going to play our two five ones in minor. Uh, and the first tune we're going to use these are on are is uh, what is this thing called love? And I'm going to make you a separate video for that.
Anyway, uh, I did my best trying to explain this in this video uh, and getting getting used to some new technology. Uh, please, uh, please ask questions for anything that wasn't clear. I'm sure it wasn't uh, uh, perfect. So, but my video wasn't perfect, I'm sure. So please ask questions. I will clear things up as best I can. Um, and, and also, if you have any feedback about what is helpful with the videos and what's not, I actually would really appreciate it because I'm, I'm learning. Uh, all right, folks.